Hi there everybody, welcome to a new episode of the vlog. Today I am going to be talking about the last man standing, talking about the killer himself, Mr. Jerry Lee Lewis. He is the last man standing, not just because that's the title of his 2006 album and uh, concert film, uh, but because he is the last survivor of the original 1986 class of Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees. Uh, as of when I'm filming this, November 24th of 2021. He is the last one. I mean, think of all the talent uh, from that original class. Talking about, you know, Sam Cooke, Elvis, James Brown, Little Richard, uh, Chuck Berry, Buddy Holly, Ray Charles, the Everly Brothers, and more. All, unfortunately, gone. Except for Jerry. Um... Jerry Lee Lewis has, of course, a tumultuous past. I'm not going to get too into his 1958 uh, marriage controversy because I want to make a video next week about various artists that were sort of blacklisted from the industry, particularly in years gone by. And so I will cover that then. But today I just want to talk about the career of one of the founding fathers of rock and roll. Uh, Jerry Lee Lewis was born in Faraday, Louisiana, in September of 1935, they were a low-income farming family. Um, eventually, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis developed a taste for the piano. Uh, not sure where he found a piano, whether it was at his church or uh, just at someone he knew his house or something, but he didn't have one at home at first. He loved the piano so much that his family wanted to do something for him, so they made an incredible investment in mortgaging their home in exchange for the money with which they purchased a piano. And uh, so now Jerry had a piano at home and that was very special. He spent all day playing it. It became sort of a family thing. Uh, of course, I mean, his much younger sister, uh, Linda Gale Lewis, of course, became a huge star in her own right. Uh, probably starting out playing on um, that same piano. Um, so yeah, excellent returns on that investment, right? Um, but at the time that would have been really risky. Uh, but the family was a little bit, uh, annoyed with the fact that he insisted on playing that raucous boogie-woogie music, uh, instead of, you know, the Lord's music instead of gospel. Which, I mean, I, I have said before that rock and roll and gospel share a lot of influences in certain ways, but, uh, of course it's that boogie-woogie beat that was, um, uh, considered evil. Jerry performed his first show at a car dealership in Louisiana in 1949. Man, I've had gigs like that. Anyway, um, apparently the highlight of his set was a song, uh, Drinkin' Wine, Spody Odie, a cover of that tune, which I thought that was interesting because I know that when Jerry Lee eventually retired in 2019, he was still playing that song. So that was the staple of his set for, you know, 70 years. I think that's pretty crazy. Uh, anyway, he started to play little gigs wherever he could find them, but, uh, you know, his family was, again, like I said, not happy with his uh, boogie-woogie style of playing. So they sent him off, let me check here, to the Southwest Bible Institute in Waxahachie, Texas. Um, Bible Institute, uh, so that he could, um, develop his talents as a musician, but do so only, uh, in service of the Lord. And not, none of that pesky pop music boogie-woogie playing anymore. But uh, he didn't take a liking to that. In fact, he was kicked out of that school for doing uh, boogie-woogie versions of the gospel songs he had been learning. This was clearly blasphemous. So he was thrown out of that school and instead just took up a new life uh, playing whatever uh, bars and honky-tonks that he could earn a couple bucks to play some tunes at. So that became his new life. And eventually, in about 1953, he would move to uh, the hub of music, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Lived there for a while, eventually moved across the state to Memphis, where he auditioned for Sun Records. And Sam Phillips must have liked him, because he signed him. And his first record for, uh, for Sun Records was a song called Crazy Arms. Um, of course, Ray Price is famous, uh, Crazy Arms. 
And uh, that song became a classic recording. Not sure how much of a hit it was at the time, but certainly in retrospect, that's a great record. Also, that same month, I believe it was December of 1956, um, a truly legendary event happened that has gone down in history as the Million Dollar Quartet. It was a spontaneous jam session that occurred when Elvis, who had been, uh, for the last year or so, signed for RCA, he had long since left Sun Records, but he came back to visit uh, Sam Phillips and the rest of the gang, and Sam called up a bunch of uh, Sun Records artists, and they came and just had a jam session. Uh, these were, of course, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis himself, uh, the great Carl Perkins, and Johnny Cash. Um, yeah, the four of them became the legendary Million Dollar Quartet. Jerry Lee, like I said, he was the last surviving member of the 1986 Rock Hall class. He's also, of course, the last surviving member of the Million Dollar Quartet. Uh, they had no idea a tape recorder was present when they were jamming out, but it was. And uh, Sam Phillips was recording them sort of in secret, and it became these legendary recordings that uh, you can still find. Uh, 1957 would go on to be a truly breakout year uh, for Jerry Lee Lewis. He, I'm looking at his discography here. It seems that he only released two singles in the year 1957. But wow, what two singles they were. The first one was Whole Lot of Shaking Going On. Came out in April with It'll Be Me on the B-side. And was number three on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. But it was a number one hit on both the country and the R&B charts in America. Um, and that became sort of a signature song. And then later that year in November, another hit single, of course, Great Balls of Fire. Uh, while I do consider a whole lot of shaking going on to be his signature song, uh, Great Balls of Fire may well be the Jerry Lee Lewis song that is most famous and most remembered today. I think so. Great Balls of Fire did even better than Whole Lot of Shaken on the charts. It was number two on uh, the Billboard charts. Again, it was a number one hit on the country and R&B charts, and it made number one in the UK as well, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, and all throughout 1957, he did touring. He performed on the Steve Allen Show. This was kind of a legendary appearance because it sort of showed the world his uh, unique performance style. Jerry Lee is, of course, famous for um, being what people refer to as the original rock and roll wild man. Um, he would pound the keys, he would stand up, he would kick the piano bench out uh, from under him. He would uh, put his feet up on the piano and kick out the keys. Oh my gosh, incredible. The energy he performed with was wild. He also was in a couple of rock and roll movies that year. The rock and roll movies were very popular around that time with uh, Alan Freed and many more uh, making rock and roll movies and Jerry Lee Lewis appeared in many of them. Everyone wanted Jerry Lee Lewis to be in their rock and roll movies because he was such a larger than life um, performer that you just had to get him on film. Uh, 1958 was another uh, big year for Jerry Lee until it all came crashing down. In February of 1958, he had a big hit with the song Breathless. Later that year, he had High School Confidential. And uh, all of these successful songs allowed him to record a studio album. Uh, that's this album behind me, simply called Jerry Lee Lewis, his debut album from 1958. Things were looking great for him until it all came crashing down one day. I'm not going to get too into this because, like I said, I want to cover it next week. Uh, basically, in 1958... Uh, press from his British tour he was going through at the time uh, found out about his wife. It was his third wife. Yes, 22-year-old Jerry Lee was on his third wife. Um, and she was the 15-year-old Myra Gale Brown. And not only that, she was his cousin. Well, first cousin once removed. Uh, to top it all off, um, after that story broke, it came out that uh, well, she wasn't actually 15. She, she was 13. Anyway, I'll get into this a little bit next week, but it ruined his career. He um, was effectively industry blacklisted. It really ruined his career, and his output of singles uh, really slowed down. And he didn't release a follow-up album. Like That was the only Jerry Lee Lewis album that existed for, uh, for really a few years. Uh, but yeah, he kept recording singles. 
uh, for uh, Sun Records. And he kept performing mostly overseas. I don't think he underwent much of an American tour during this time. So he was recording less and less for Sun Records. In 1963, he signed with Smash Records. And he sort of attempted a comeback. He had this live album, Live at the Star Club in Hamburg, which was the same club that the Beatles were famous for playing at before they were big hits. This album, I don't even think, was given a wide release in America when it first came out. But in retrospect, it's considered one of the greatest live rock and roll records of all time. Uh, he also did a lot of TV appearances that year. In 1964-65, of course, this is when the Beatles are blowing up. This is when the whole British invasion is happening, and a lot of these artists are naming Jerry Lee as one of their influences. Uh, and he was doing a lot of TV shows, and he was playing... Like, I know he played a lot of times on Shindig, um, but still, he was having a hard time emerging from the shadow of um, that story of course that had broken about him so he was still uh completely failing to have much success in america until 1968 in 1968 still with smash records his manager said to him hey i think why don't we try some country records why don't we move away from rock and roll a little bit and do some country records uh jerry was pretty much at rock bottom in his career at that point so he records this song called Another Place, Another Time. And it was a big hit. Did really well on the country charts. And he would become a fixture on the country charts for the better part of a decade. From 1968 to 1977, he had this major career resurgence on the country charts. Probably his biggest time, or his biggest hit, rather, of this era. I would think would be She Even Woke Me Up to Say Goodbye uh, from 1969. Is it yes, it is. Yeah, suddenly Jerry Lee is, is popular. He even is having hits on the pop charts again. Believe it or not, it's happening. He has Me and Bobby McGee, his version of it uh, in 1971 is a hit. His version of Chantilly Lace in 1972 is a hit. In 1973, he got the uh, amazing opportunity to perform at the Grand Ole Opry. Uh, played a crazy 40-minute set at the Grand Ole Opry and uh, was a big highlight of his career. After those years of uh, newfound success on the country charts, he, I don't want to say he slows down. His recording output slows down, but he still uh, remains popular on uh, in the touring circuit. You know, Sometimes he would tour with some other legacy rock and roll artists like uh, Little Richard or Chuck Berry. Sometimes he would go with solo. And play a mixture of his early hits from the 50s and his uh, country uh, period hits. Of course, like I mentioned, in 1986, he was named as one of the uh, first inductees into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I just don't know what to say except that I thank God that I'm living to, to be here to get this award. And when he attended the ceremony, despite the fact that he was ill from a series of uh, stomach surgeries he'd had to have uh, around that time, he uh, launched uh, into a jam session, this legendary jam session with all of the original 1986 um, Hall of Fame inductees that were still living at that time and also just some other rock stars that were attending. And that became an annual tradition every year, pretty much to this day at the Rock Hall. They have some sort of major jam. And that was really started by Jerry Lee Lewis. Um, after that, yeah, he continues to tour sort of the oldies circuit, continued to tour through not only the 80s and 90s, but through the 2000s as well. In 2005, he turned 70, and shortly thereafter, he recorded a brand new album called Last Man Standing, which was released in 2006. Uh, he also made a concert film DVD uh, under the same title then, and still kept touring. He was not done. I remember when I was about 13 years old, I watched the... Uh, I can't remember if it was a live broadcast, I think it was, of the 2009 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame concerts. A legend, linking today with yesterday, with two hands, ten fingers, on 88 keys, pounding out a hellbound, yet heaven-sent, great balls of fire!
I think at that time I, I didn't even know that Jerry Lee was still around. Um, but I remember he looked kind of old and frail, but still played his old songs. And I remember watching TV and thinking, man, I am really witnessing one of the last public appearances probably of one of the great icons. Turns out I was totally wrong. Um, and it wasn't the end of Jerry's career by any means. The following year in 2010, he puts out another new album called Mean Old Man. Uh, in 2014, he releases yet another new album. Uh, I believe it's just called Rock and Roll. Uh, in 2015, he turns 80. Actually, as long as I'm talking about Jerry Lee's live performances, I should mention Kenny Lovelace, who has been his guitarist since 1969 and performed live with him on stage for a whopping 50 years. A true icon in his own right as a studio musician and uh, guitarist. Um, anyway, uh, in 2017, despite the fact that he was 81, turned 82 that year, he underwent another year full of concerts. And on November 24th of 2017, which by totally random chance, I didn't even plan this, that's four years ago today that I'm recording this, I got the chance to see Jerry Lee Lewis. Uh, it was at the theater at the Ace Hotel in Los Angeles, and... It was an incredible experience. Jerry Lee came out. Um, I mean, he, he looked a little bit frail, but I mean, he is 82. And one thing that blew my mind that I honestly wasn't even expecting was how well he could still play. And he could still sing, but his, 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 his hands were still so fast at 82. Uh, I can see him with his legendary band. It was a truly awesome night. I wish I was vlogging back then. And uh, when the show ended, uh, I ran out the side exit of the theater because I wanted to catch a glimpse of him getting into his uh, limousine and leaving. And I actually did. I got to see him. I walked up and I said, awesome show, Jerry. Love you. And he sort of just, like, I don't even think he heard me or saw me or anything. Or he was just really annoyed that someone came out and went and harassed him after his show, which I probably should not have done, but it was Jerry Lee Lewis, and I was like, I'll never get this opportunity again. Anyway, that was an amazing experience for me. He had another full year of concerts in 2018. He played two concerts at the beginning of 2019 before he unfortunately suffered a stroke in late February. Um, uh, he survived the stroke. Uh, it was, by all accounts, sort of a minor stroke, but he was unable to perform after that. And any attempts to get back healthy again and perform again were curtailed by, of course, uh, COVID-19. Um, so he was never able to reschedule uh, those shows. I had heard this rumor, or I think it was actually an article, right before the pandemic, that Jerry Lee Lewis had entered the studio to record a new album. This was literally a week or two, I think, before the pandemic shut everything down. And I had read that uh, the stroke had caused him to be completely unable to play piano anymore. But then he entered the studio and surprised even himself by still being able to do it. He was he said he'd been scared to play the piano since his stroke, but that once he entered the studio and started running through some old songs, he was still able to do it. And it blew his mind, and everyone was really excited about this album project. But since COVID happened, I haven't heard anything further about him recording an album. Hi everybody, this is me later editing the video. I almost forgot to mention that last year, uh, on the occasion of Jerry's uh, 85th birthday, uh, there was a really awesome live stream organized, uh, which included many of his friends performing for him. And it was really cool to see him enjoying the music, and it was cool to see his band out there playing again. Just a fun special all around. One thing that's really cool is every couple of months, uh, I'll link to the YouTube channel uh, of I think it's his wife's YouTube channel. I'm not totally sure, but there's a YouTube channel that posts these Every couple of months he gives a little update to his fans uh, Even as recently as just a few weeks ago, and it's always nice to see those always nice to see Jerry Lee Lewis still going strong Hello, this is Jerry Lee Lewis. I want to say hello to all my Facebook fans and everybody that's listening and 
Everybody that's looking, and everybody that's good looking, and everybody that's good looking. Uh, he is 86 years old. He is, like I said, the last man standing, and it's amazing to see him still around. Uh, that'll do it for this episode on the incredible and long career of Jerry Lee Lewis. Of course, next week I'm going to talk about artists that were industry blacklisted um, way back in the day. That'll be, I think, an interesting video. I'll start researching that. For those of you who don't know, I'm a musician myself, and you can check out my description for links to where you can find my own music, where it's sold or streamed online, as well as links to, or a list, rather, of my upcoming performance dates. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I will catch you again with a new rock history video next Thursday. See you then.